We welcome you here at the Technical Forum at the Group Exhibit 2013. Please have a seat, have a free drink. You are really invited to join us, to join with us and to listen to the next presentation and ask some questions at the end. Come here and enjoy with us the next presentation dealing with the topic status of Allogen stack development. It will be presented by the develop development manager, Dr. Mati Neponen. Here we go. Give me some big hands for Dr. Dan opponent. Okay, thank you very much and thanks for the organizers for, for the pleasant opportunity of, of giving, giving the talk and giving the state of, of our company and the stack development that we are doing. So my name is Matti Noponen, working at Elgogen and the topic or the content of my presentation is that I will first explain a bit what, if, uh, what is Elgogen, the company background. Then I will go through the Elgogen cell and stack uh, performance data and, and finally give a summary of, of our doings. I hope that my presentation will not last 30 minutes but, but uh, there should be a lot of time for questions. Elgogen is a company that is concentrated on solid oxide fuel cell development. We develop both unit cells and, and stacks. Uh, the company was founded at 2001 to Estonia as a unit cell manufacturing company producing solid oxide fuel cell unit cells. Uh, and nowadays we have our own production facilities located in Tallinn, Estonia. At 2009, we also established a new company to Finland called Elkotsen OU, which is dedicated on stack development. And it was done together with uh, Technical Research Center of Finland, VTT, until uh, last year, quite solely, as then the first employees were, were hired to Elkotsen OU. We are both private-owned companies, uh, with private-owned limited companies, both Elgoten AS and Elgoten OU. Our position in the value chain is, is so that we sell our unit cells to stack manufacturers freely to all, all stack manufacturers, but we also sell our stacks to system manufacturers. Elgoten AS is, is basically getting the powders from, from the vendors, producing uh, from those uh, unit cells, then selling those to stack manufacturers, and, and also, also selling the cells to uh, our, our stack development company. We get the stack components from also other places. We, we rely on networks and sell those for system developers. We also rely really heavily on, on R&D. We have been R&D company almost as the start for, for six years, just doing R&D before starting any sales at the sales side. The same has been also with the stack side, about three years. The R&D is done uh, for unit sales in, in Estonia. We have an exclusive collaboration with the uh, University of Tartu and National Institute of Chemical Physics and Biophysics. The stack development is done together with VTT, which is the Technical Research Center of Finland, which is not an exclusive uh, contract we have. And VTT is doing development for all, all of the stack uh, areas that, that, or stack development areas, including materials up to system, system development. Uh, the company Elgotsen AS started uh, the first unit cell uh, sales back to, uh, to 2007 and nowadays we have more than 10 active customers all around the world. Uh, our, our unit cells are, are used both in solid oxide fuel cells but also in solid oxide electrolyzers. 
with quite nice experience. Our product is based on anode supported structure and, and uh, it's optimized for low temperature region. We operate between 600 to 700 degrees. <coughs> Uh, we still use conventional materials in, in our unit cells. You can, you can find all the materials directly from the website. We, we have nickel YSZ anode, we have YSZ electrolyte, and, and then we use LSC cathode in, in our cells. And the trick is, is that we have really thin electrolyte with really good gas tightness in, in our cells. The stack side, uh, we started our first sales uh, last year and made the first delivery, deliveries this year. Uh, the nominal power of our, our current stack that we are selling is, is half a kilowatt and it's optimized again for low temperature region for solid oxide. So uh, we, we have the stack that really can run below 700 degrees. And during this year we, we are introducing one kilowatt size stack. Okay, then to the performance of our cells and stacks. So we produce the cells from powders. We have our own manufacturing facilities and manufacturing pilot manufacturing line. We have made some campaigns to prove that, that our manufacturing processes are really for mass production. We can produce this, this with high quality and, and with, with good yield. Uh, as said, this is anode supported cell, working temperature is between 600 and 700 degrees and we can deliver different cells up to 20 by 20 centimeters to, to customers. The cell thickness varies between 500 microns to 250 microns that, that we can deliver. The performance, we, we claim to be state of the art at low temperature region. For, for unit cells. Uh, we have the same performance as, as usually others have about 100 degrees higher temperatures. So these three curves are, are measured at 700, 650 and 600 degrees. One could then ask what is the reforming capability of, of this low temperature region and of course we have made some, some experiments also with that. So these are done at 650 degrees, these measurements. Uh, the highest curve here shows uh, the performance at, at pure hydrogen. Uh, the second curve from the top is, is with 3% uh, water, water or moisture included to the fuel. And then the last two curves are, uh, are with higher water content, 40% water content. And, and then we have also made, made some some tests with synthetic refor reformate that includes then also methane and, and uh, carbon monoxide and we, we can see that, that the cell performance is not, not actually changed when, when including also hydro uh, hydrocarbons to the fuel or, or something else than hydrogen. So we can, we can say definitely that we have a good reforming capabilities even at, at low current densities, oh, sorry, at low, low temperature region. We have of course made also endurance testing for our, our cells. Uh, we usually try to do the testing at bit harsher conditions that is used in a system or in a stack. And, and this, for example, this testing has been done at 0.4 amperes per square centimeter current density. Then we have run some IV curve testing and impedance measurement testing at, at different current densities. And what we can see is that uh, the, of course we have degradation as, as everybody else but when going to this sort of real uh, stack current densities which usually lies between 0.2 and 0.3 amperes per square centimeter our degradation rate is, is well below 1% per thousand hours which then gives in a stack or in a system lifetime expectation above 20,000 hours. Again, these are done at 650 degrees and, and at quite realistic fuel utilization rate. We, we use 60% in, in this test, sorry, 20%. I will show data 
endurance data also from stack which is done at higher fuel utilization. Okay, then to the stack side. Uh, again, the stacks are, are optimized for below 700 degrees is operate, operating temperature region. Because of the lower operating temperature, we can utilize also a bit less expensive materials in the stack, which gives us a competitive advantage also in, in cost effectiveness of, of our stack. We have also uh, quite low pressure drops. Those are about 10 millibars at, at nominal uh, operating uh, point. So this gives again a good basis for, for system developers to have really high efficient systems. We have also co-flow design, which is again basically what, what our customers would like to have, to have really easily integratable stack to the system. We have made our first sales now with also stack side uh, at this uh, 0.5 kilowatt size design. And as said, we are introducing the one kilowatt uh, stack during this year. And the stack is optimized for stationary applications. The stack performance or the polarization curve is shown here. There's a two curves. Uh, the blue curve shows uh, the performance uh, for two cell stack or two cell single repeat unit and the green curve then shows uh, for this uh, half a kilowatt size stack and the aim of this curve is just to show that, that the stacking is, is not a big issue for us. Uh, we, we basically can produce the same power also from, from really small size or only a couple of cell size stack to, to really uh, these this bigger, bigger size stacks. The endurance test that we are currently continuing at the moment, we have here, we have about 600 hours data to show. It's uh, done at furnace at 700 degrees, is 0.3 amperes per square centimeter. We have run now, I think, at, at this point, we have run five thermo thermocycles uh, with, with the system and, and we haven't seen degradation yet with, with the stack design. Of course, we have to continue the testing and have a lot more hours to, to prove that this, this is also valid for, for many more hours still. But this, for example, this test is, is made at realistic fuel utilization, so 60% has been the fuel utilization here. As we claim that, that <coughs> our technology is, is good in the sense that, that the temperature, we can go to low temperatures, this, this is just to show that, that uh, what is the temperature dependency <coughs> of our stack power. Uh, you, can, you can see that uh, the temperature region here begins at, at 610 degrees, ending up to 680 degrees, and we see only about 4% decay in, in, in in power as the temperature is changed from the maximum to the lowest temperature. Uh, the temperature is determined as, as the average, average temperature of inlet, inlet and outlet gases for the stack here. Fuel utilization, what, we, what our stack is capable, we have shown that uh, it, it can reach above 80% fuel utilization. Uh, but but uh, nominal would be 70% for, for this stack design. And this is for, for full stack also, the measurements. Also oxygen utilization, showing that, that the uh, flow distribution is quite equal uh, inside the stack. Uh, we, have, we, can, we can show that the, we have made new, new measurements also up to 50% without showing any, any big uh, voltage decrease in the stacks. And then one, one quite important thing is that, that our stack is also with a good, good ga gas tightness. This is one, one of the issues to give a small degradation rate 
and and what we can show here is that uh, this is a measurement online measurement that at uh, during polarization curve and we can show that that the current uh, leakage of oxygen is is less than one percent always compared to the fuel that we are putting in into the stack so this gives again a good good basis for really long-term good operating stack okay then a summary quick summary here what we have shown is that we have excellent performance at low temperatures both with our unit cells and with our stacks we are still quite new even though Elkogen has been in the market for 12 years now we are still quite new in the business but we are really rapidly growing our importance in the fuel cell ecosystem and we are dedicated to industrialize the technology for open markets so acknowledgements uh, we are getting of course a lot of funding from from national funding agents so Tekes from Finnish side and and Enterprise Estonia for our Estonian side and acknowledgement for our R&D collaborators both to the Estonian and the Finnish side so thank you Thank you, Mr. Napoleon, for this very interesting presentation. Now, you here in the audience have the opportunity to make some remarks or to ask some question. Is here anybody now who like to ask Mr. Napoleon something about his products and the development? Oh, yes. Hi. Hey. You mentioned the thickness of your electrolyte, that they're thin and gas tight. Could you tell again what was the thickness and why does it have an excellent gas tightness? The thickness is uh, about one to two microns that we have. And, and the gas tightness comes from a good manufacturing. <laughs> practices that that we have I, I can't go to details why we have so good gas tightness but 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 as, as you may, may also seen from the IV curves that that the OCV voltage is really high for ourselves showing that that the gas tightness is really good you are of course welcome to visit our booth we are standing at C50 50. <laughs> okay thank you so it's a, you got the words I just want to talk about. So if there are some questions coming to you further on, you can visit um, the booth of Ecogen here at the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells at C50. Thank you very much. And uh, give him a backhand again. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you.